I'm Aaron Rutten, and in this tutorial, I'll teach you how to use the top new features in the May 2023 version of Adobe Illustrator. First is Generative Recolor. This is a beta feature that I've already covered in detail in a separate video. If you're interested in learning more about it, check that out. I'll give you a quick overview of what this can do and where to find it in Illustrator. This feature can be found under Edit, Edit Colors, Generative Recolor. But first, you'll need to make a selection of the artwork that you'd like to recolor. Here I have this vector illustration I created of a soda with ice splashing into it. Let's say I want to make it a different flavor. Under Prompt, I'll enter blue and purple, then click Generate. Beneath the prompt under Variations, I'll be able to see four different variations of color each time I click on Generate. You can scroll through this list of generated images, which can get fairly large. I think this one looks good, as do some of the others. Now the difficult part of recoloring vector art is not changing the colors, but deciding on which colors you like the best. If you don't like any of these variations, you can choose to add colors to help guide the recoloring in the right direction. For example, I'll click the plus button and choose more of a cyan blue, then click generate again. Now you can see it has introduced some cyan into the mix. I'll add a specific violet color, and now you can see that's included as well. There is a menu of sample prompts that you can open and select from if you like. You simply click on one of them to apply it. There are undo and redo buttons you can use to navigate through your changes, and the reset button will reset all of the colors to their original state. If you'd like to save this palette of colors, down at the bottom there is a folder icon and you can choose to save the prominent colors in the artwork or all of the colors. When you click on one of these options, the sets of colors will appear in the swatches panel. To remove these, click on the folder to the left of the color swatches and then click the trash can. You can even click on advanced options, which will bring up the traditional recolor dialog. This gives you access to the old colors and the new colors that they'll be converting to. You can manually link the colors to new colors here, but this is a tedious method that we're trying to avoid by using generative recolor. There is also a tab to go to the other manual recolor mode where you can drag the colors on a color wheel to change them. This can be helpful to fine tune your colors. For example, you can shift the hue or make the colors more saturated or more muted. You can even adjust individual colors. Holding shift will keep everything else from moving. Optionally, you can use the link button to do this. You can even use the modes and slider at the bottom to change the value or brightness of the colors. The second mode allows you to control the saturation. This is sort of going off topic from generative fill, so I won't go into any more detail about this panel. The next feature we will look at is rewrite, which is also a beta feature. This will allow you to analyze roster or outlined text to determine which font is being used. Text that has been rosterized or outlined cannot easily be edited. If you forget which font you used, you lose access to the font, or you get a document that has fonts someone else chose, it can be very difficult to know which font you should select in order to edit the text. Here's an example of a logo I created many years ago. I probably don't have this font anymore, but even if I do, I have no idea what it is called. I can waste a lot of time looking through all of my fonts to try to find it, but what would be easier is to just go to the window menu, choose retype, and then select the text that I want to analyze. I'll click on enter retype in the panel, the text will be analyzed, and I'll be able to choose from a list of possible matches. The first option looks correct to me. I can look it up in the Adobe font library, or if I am certain that's the correct font, I can click in the top right on the cloud icon to instantly sync it with my Adobe Creative Cloud. That'll put it into Adobe Illustrator and I'll be able to type with it. If I use my text tool to type the same text beneath the example using that font, you can see that it does indeed match. Now, of course, the spacing is a bit different on the font, the letters are misaligned, and I added an outline around the edges of the font. So if I want these to match, I'll need to add those modifications. That will be easier to do if I convert this text to outlines, which is how I lost track of the font to begin with. I can even rosterize this font to turn it into pixels, and Rewrite can still identify it. To exit out of this mode, click on the Exit Retype button. Rewrite does have its limitations. For example, analyzing a very low resolution image will not work as well since there are fewer pixels to define the font. 
Just as well, transforming and distorting the font can cause rewrite to misidentify it. Analyzing text that consists of more than one font can have limited success as well. I am able to recognize half of this text, but not the other half. You'll also find that a lot of the time, the font is just not correctly identified. But the fonts that you are shown are pretty close, so in some cases, that might be good enough. Image trace has been improved in Adobe Illustrator. You can now analyze the type of image and automatically choose the best tracing method. As you can see, if I trace this digital drawing of a crow, the image is vectorized and the background is automatically removed since Illustrator sees this as a sketch. You can try the other options if Illustrator doesn't choose the type of look you had in mind. If your image is too complex, meaning it has too many fine details, you can simplify it if the method is set to abutting. As you can see, I can optimize this image so that it retains the same basic appearance, but with far fewer shapes. A less complex image might be able to print or be utilized more easily. I'll try tracing a color image next. I'll choose Ignore Color and have it exclude white. This can be particularly useful for quickly removing background colors surrounding your artwork. Just be sure that method is set to abutting. That's all of the top features I have for you today. If you'd like to stay up to date on what's new in Illustrator and the world of content creation, be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. Thanks for watching and stay creative.